What's up guys, welcome to Outdoor Instincts Live. Today I'm going to do a little bit on saltwater tanks. So if you are starting up a new saltwater tank and you're not quite sure what to do, this would be good for you. Alright, let's get started by introducing you to who is in the tank. Over here, I've got two clownfish. That's Marlin and Nemo. Uh, down here, swimming around with them, that is a firefish goby. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit on his colors. He's not bashful. That's alfalfa. And then this little guy who likes to dart back and forth, that is a yellow tang. His name is Bubbles. He was added to this tank, oh, about two, three days ago. So he's still a little bit skittish, but he <laughs> he looks like he's getting better. Alright, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, when setting up a saltwater tank, it's important to know that you can't not just, you, you can't just jump right into it. It's something that takes a lot of time. This tank, um, I've had this tank for, I want to say, two months now. It's been about two months now. Uh, this tank was originally a freshwater tank. Um, I had some African, I believe they're called cichlids, in there for a while. And then I decided, you know what, I'd like to do a saltwater tank. Um, saltwater, in my opinion, is easier to manage than freshwater. Um, it doesn't get as dirty as fast, and there's just a, a lot more accessories that you can add to your saltwater tank to kind of help you with the... Uh, so, to get started, you're just going to need a few basic essentials, which I have over here. Uh, Instant Ocean, love this brand. Uh, this right here is just some salt mix. This turns your regular water into a sea salt mixture that's uh, compatible with your fish. Uh, if you look at the instructions here, it tells you exactly, you know, how to mix it. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Okay, uh, to prepare small quantities, use a half cup of instant ocean per U.S. gallon. So if you like doing a water change or something, those are the instructions you would go by. Um, if you notice down in the corner here, this box is good for 10 gallons. Um, I bought a little 10-gallon box because I have to do a wa partial water change. So all that would go right into the water that I am changing out. Um, so whatever size tank you have, you're going to want to buy enough salt for as many gallons as that tank is. Um, I've seen them in bags, you know, from 10 gallons to 60 gallons, all the way up to, the, you know, containers that are good for, you know, 160 gallons or more. Um, so after you get that, uh, you're going to go ahead, you're going to add your fresh water to your tank, uh, dump all the salt, it's a new aquarium, no animals in there, dump all the salt right into the water, mix it up till it's clear. Um, you're going to want the water temperature to be... I think it's like 78 degrees, and then that is where your next little instrument comes in, which is this. This is a hydrometer. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there are numbers on there. The 1.021 all the way up to the 1.026, it's red. That is your safe zone. Anything below it is too less. Anything above it is too much. And this measures uh, your specific gravity and salinity. And basically what that tells you is um, how much salt you have in your water. i go ahead and show you guys here basically what it is that I'm talking about. Got these new glass lids and I'm telling you, they just make a world of difference. They're a lot nicer. But okay, there is a little drip point or a uh, fill point right there. And basically if you want to do this correctly and not get any air bubbles, you're going to want to tip this down into there, let that little fill point fill, then slowly dip it back down into the water, let it fill up, bring it back up. You're going to want to bring it on a nice, even level surface, so that way you get an accurate reading. Now you can see my tank is at, one. it's about right in between one zero. 23 and 1024 so that's that's perfect really um, but like I said before anywhere in that red zone is safe I don't like it to be way down here because that just does not leave a lot of room for error so I mean you know when it's way lower when it's way high you have the risk of either having too less or too much um, and when your water starts to evaporate which it will because these this water is anywhere from 78 to uh, 80 degrees it can really make a big impact on your tank especially if you have a smaller tank like a 10 gallon tank uh, as soon as you start getting some evaporation that's going to boost your salt you know way up so not good 
Alright, so that's how that works. That's one of the basic things you're going to need. So you're going to mix all your water up. You're going to add it to your aquarium. The water in the aquarium should be about 78 degrees when you start. Um, if you get a reading like I just got, you're golden. Um, anywhere in that red zone is safe. You can choose to either add or take um, salt out, whatever you prefer. Just make sure you're in the red. Um, I believe on the salt packaging it tells you ideal is basically what mine just was at 78. Uh, 1.023, 1.024 is ideal. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um. So what you're gonna want to do after you mix your stuff up or before at the same time doesn't really matter. It's all a choice of preference. It's all a matter of preference. Um, then you're gonna want to add this right here, some crushed coral, and on this side over here, I've got live sand. Um, the live sand has live bacteria in it. All this stuff comes right from the ocean. Um, it has live bacteria in it which is essential for your tank's ecosystem. Um, another thing that you can notice in here are these big rocks that I have. I got one there, I've got a few over here. Um, like I said this tank's only been up for about two months so I don't have a lot in it right now but those are live rocks and those do the same thing as the live sand does. It provides shelter for fish, hiding spots, um, and it also has all that live bacteria and you know microorganisms and stuff in it. So you're going to want to add some live sand and some coral. It is one pound per gallon of water. So if you have a 20 gallon tank, you're going to want 20 gallon or uh, excuse me, 20 pounds um, of live sand or your live coral. You're going to want to mix it up because you want to get you know if you've got a 20 gallon tank, I'd say 10 pounds of each would be pretty good. Um, so you go ahead and get all that in there. When you first mix this stuff up, depending on the size of your tank, it's always going to be really, really cloudy. You're going to have a lot of sediment. You're going to have a lot of just nasty stuff in the water. It's going to look terrible. So let your tank cycle. It's going to need to cycle depending on the size of the tank. Um, I set a friend of mine, uh, set, I set his tank up uh, for him. He had a, what do you have, a 10-gallon tank, and it only took about two or three days for that tank to just totally clear up. It was just a little tank. This tank, I put all my stuff in there, my live sand, my live rock, my corals and stuff. It took um, almost two weeks just to clear out. Um, so when it's nice and clear like this, um, you're, you know, you know that's good. All your sediment is settled. You're going to want to throw in some live rocks like I got here. Um, I don't have anywhere near enough live rock for the size of the tank that I have. Um, I'm working on getting some more. But you're going to want to let your tank cycle depending on the size for, oh, I'd say at least a couple of weeks. You're going to want to get that bacteria level up and running good. All right, so the next thing, if you're new at this, I would suggest getting is this book right here. This is Marine Fish's An Expert Pocket Guide, 500 and plus essential uh, need-to-know aquarium species. Um, this book is absolutely awesome. It's got full colored pages and details about just, well, as it says, 500 plus different aquarium species in here. So if you're looking to get a specific fish or there's you know, just fish you're just not sure about, pick this book up. I mean, it's really taught me a lot. All right, next thing you're going to want to get, your salt water is different from your fresh water in a lot of ways. Uh, the water chemistry, for example, um, just the way that you can clean it, it's just more efficient. Uh, over here, I've got what's called a protein skimmer. Let's see if I can step around here and get you a better shot. Right there. This one is an Instant Ocean Sea Cyclone 101, I think. And you can just see all the foam and the gunk building up in there. Now, what this does is, the best way I can describe it is, you know, when you were in kindergarten or whatever you guys used to have those two liter bottles that you would tape together and you would spin them and they would create a cyclone. That's basically what this thing does. It pulls all this water out of your tank through this J-tube over here in the back. That black piece there, that's an air valve. You adjust the amount of air that goes in and goes out. Um, or excuse me, just goes in. And what that does is it creates a cyclone down here. The water forms a cyclone. As you can see, it's really, really white. That's millions and millions and millions of what they call like micro bubbles very 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 tiny and what they do is they all collect and as the water is being pulled into the sea cyclone all the dirt and um, gunk and just fish poop and pee and uneaten food and stuff rises right up in these bubbles and they pop and then they form your collection cup here so all this nasty stuff right here would be in your tank 
if you didn't have a protein skimmer. Just real ugly stuff. So that really, really helps cut down, like, you know, with your uh, phosphate buildup and just your organic waste. It just takes it all right out of the tank. Um, another thing you should go out and get is one of these. This is just a dual carbon filter. This one is, I believe this one's good for up to 85 or 100 gallons. So overfiltration in a tank, in my opinion, is, is really good. I mean, the more filtration, the better. Alright, so that's pretty much the essentials of it. Once you get everything up and running, um, let your tank cycle for a little bit, get your protein skimmer, get your filtration going good, make sure that your salt is good, um, and then you know what, it's pretty much just a waiting game. Once you let your tank cycle for a few weeks, depending on the size of your tank, you're ready for fish. Um, clownfish these guys over here um, they are excellent excellent starter fish they're in like your damselfish family and they are just they're really 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 hardy they got good temperament they're playful they're just a really good beginner's fish um, the fire goby he is also a decent beginner's fish um, I'm new at this too so I didn't want to throw anything in here that was too expert of a level um yellow